There's no longer anything sad or unpleasant or wicked. Everybody is nice. Everybody is sweet. Everybody means well. There are only the Nazis that are nasty. The nasty Nazis. Everybody else is wonderful. And the hills are alive with the sound of music in this lovely, brave, sweet new world. That's the dream that people, so many Catholics are now living in. It's completely false. And do not be deceived by the modern world pretending that everybody is smiling, smiling, and everything is nice and nice. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived by the new church, which came in with Vatican II, which has replaced the Catholic Church, and which has a whole lot of Catholics fooled, completely fooled. The leader of the Society of Vice wrote a document, which has just come out recently, which more or less said, Romans, we accept your Vatican too. It didn't say it bluntly, it said it ambiguously, but that's basically what it was saying. We in the society are open to the new religion. Let's put it like that. We're open to the new religion. Strange circumstances for all of us, my dear friends. It's about 20 to 30 years ago that we were doing this. And now, once again, St. Ramada Inn, or the equivalent. The Holy Marriott Cathedral, or the St. Ramada Inn. Stranger things have happened in the, in the history of the church. What really matters is the faith. Remember St. Athanasius, when he was also driven out of the church, a great saint, a great bishop, the Bishop of Alexandria, and he was driven out of his diocese five times. And he was persecuted, he was on the run. And he and his followers, the Catholics, were having to say Mass in the St. Ramada Inn and the Holy Marriott Cathedral. But he said, they have the buildings, we have the faith. And let's hope that that's the boast that we can make, that we have the faith. The buildings will follow the faith. That's why, when the Society of Pastors started up in the United States several years ago, it began with the faith in unusual circumstances, and then the buildings followed. And now the Society of Pastors in the United States, like in France and Germany, even in England, has some very handsome buildings. There's some lovely chapels, especially in Germany, I remember. Very art, beautiful, with some real artwork original for the mass and because of the mass and because the artist had the faith and the buildings follow but the faith doesn't follow the buildings the faith leads the buildings the buildings are now there for the society but a terrible thing is happening to the faith of the society it's being corrupted from above from the top downwards, by the superiors, I hate to say. Just like in Vatican II, it was the Pope and the Vatican which forced the new religion on the rest of the church. A lot of people liked the new religion because it was so much easier, the religion of Vatican II. But a number of Catholics did not like it because they knew that it wasn't Catholic. But it was forced on them from above. Same sort of thing happening today. Some people like going with the new direction of the Society of Christ the Tenth because it's easier. It makes me, I'm at peace with the world, I'm at peace with the church, with the mainstream church. I don't have to fight my brothers and sisters who are in, in the mainstream church. I'm moving in the direction of getting back in line with them. It's going to be easier, but but it's moving away from God. It's losing what the society had from Archbishop Lefebvre, and thanks to Archbishop Lefebvre, which was a firm grip on the faith of all time, on the faith of 20 centuries, on the faith of all time. 
thanks to the strong faith of the Archbishop himself, Archbishop III. And he raised a, a whole generation and a whole congregation of priests. But the priests, the young priests, were not older men like the Archbishop. They didn't have a knowledge of the ch church, of the old church, anything like as deep and as strong as the Archbishop had. The young men that followed him in the 1970s and 1980s were themselves born in the 1950s and even the 1960s. And they had the modern world in their bloodstream. Too much already in their bloodstream. And therefore, whereas you could say that the Archbishop had the old world and the old church in his bloodstream from his, in his young years in the 1900s, 1910s, the youngsters of today had a much more modern world in their bloodstream. And so once the Archbishop died in 1991, a few years later, the attraction of the modern world began to make itself felt again. Imagine a little harbor, a tidal harbor, where from high tide to low tide is at least 16 feet. And so that's, there are places where the, the difference between high tide and low tide is as much as that. Imagine that in this harbor there are rocks, which at low tide are quite dangerous, which at high tide there's no problem because when the, water, the, when the harbor is full of water, the boats just go backwards and forwards without any danger between the rocks. But at low tide they've got to watch out for the rocks, otherwise they're going to hit the rocks and sink. High tide is the faith. When the faith is strong, there's all kinds of temptations and difficulties and problems which Catholics just sail over when the faith is strong. But when the faith gets weaker, they run into these temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil, especially the world in the case of the society. The attraction of being in with the mainstream church, no longer being out of step, no longer having to swim against the current, being with everybody else, being respectable, being recognized again, as opposed to being pointed out with your finger. You're out of step. You're an Ephemerist. You're a Saint of Acantus. You're, you're dividing the church. You're not with the church. You're against it. You're not Catholic. You're not Catholic. I'm sure many of you have heard that tune before. But the mainstream current today, the, 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 the Vatican II, was to adapt the church to the modern world. And so those who belong to the Church of Vatican II have peace with the modern world, but they don't have peace with God. They're not going to confession. There, there are far fewer confessions. They don't believe in sin. They commit sins, but they don't believe in sin. They believe that all of us are completely innocent, and when we die, all of us go to heaven, which is why the, mass, the requiem masses are now in white instead of in black. There's no longer anything sad or unpleasant or wicked. Everybody is nice. Everybody is sweet. Everybody means well. There are only the Nazis that are nasty, the nasty Nazis. Everybody else is wonderful. And the hills are alive with the sound of music in this lovely, brave, sweet new world. That's the dream that people, so many Catholics are now living in. It's completely false. The devil exists big time. Sin exists big time. Most souls at death, ever since our Lord, fall into hell big time. And they spend a, an eternity, from that moment onwards, they spend an eternity in a terrible suffering and misery, hating God. And that's what they've chosen. And that's what happens. The church has always taught, our Lord himself said, broad is the way that leads to destruction, narrow is the path that leads to salvation. And few there be that go in thereat. Make no mistake, my friends, and do not be deceived by the modern world pretending that everybody is smiley smiley and everything is nicey nicey. 
Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived by the new church, which came in with Vatican II, which has replaced the Catholic Church, and which has a whole lot of Catholics fooled, completely fooled. Because if they keep the externals of the Catholic Church, and it's so much nicer than easier than the old religion. The new religion is much easier. It's attractive. It's glamorous. Everybody dancing. The priest during mass dancing, and the girls dancing around the altar. Everything is nicey, nicey, sweetie, sweetie, smiley, smiley. But it's just not real. And it's not real because you and I have original sin. And my sweet little children have original sin. And the modern education system which supposes that they don't have original sin is gravely misleading the little children and their parents. My Johnny would never do that. Oh yes, he would when your back is turned. In front of you, he's a little angel. But behind your back, he is a little monkey. We have original sin. We are all of us naughty. We all of us commit sins. We all of us need to go to confession. Our Lord instituted confession because he knew darn well that even if we were baptized, most of us would fall back into sin after being baptized. And therefore he made a way for us to get to heaven, even if we're unfaithful after baptism. That's the way we human beings are. We are not little angels nor big angels. We are either juvenile delinquents or senile delinquents. But in any case, we are delinquents. And the Catholic knows it, he eats his breast, he goes to confession, he humbly confesses his sins. God is with the humble, God is against the proud, scripture says so. God is with the humble, he's against the proud. The modern religion is proud. Beneath that nicey nicey surface, there is a very nasty pride. And that pride is, I don't commit sin, I don't make mistakes. The only one that makes mistakes is Almighty God. There's blasphemy in the new religion behind that sweety, sweety surface, that Disneyland surface. And the Society of St. Pius X, which began, thanks to Archbishop of Lefebvre, with the old religion, there are too many signs that it's now sliding towards the new religion, especially at the top. Too many signs. When the Archbishop <coughs> consecrated bishops in 1988, he had a, a frontal running with the Romans. And the Romans tried to get him not to consecrate. And they made him this sort of promise and that sort of understanding. And the Arch But then when it came down to the wire, the Archbishop knew that they were not going to follow through. The Romans were not going to look after the old religion. Because today's Romans, the new Romans, do not want the old religion. And therefore they would not protect the society and they would not protect the, the old mass or anything that the Archbishop did. When he knew that, when it was clear in 1988, the Archbishop then said, All right, no more talks. No more talks until these Romans come back to the old religion and come back to their Catholic senses. Until then, no more talks. We go our way with the help of God, with the grace of God. We're going to stick to the old religion. We're going to stick to the old mass. We're going to stick to being juvenile and senile delinquents. Because that's the way we are. And we're not going to pretend that we aren't. We're going to stay in reality and we are not joining in the great fantasy. That's how the Archbishop, the Archbishop, the Archbishop took that strong stand was very, very clear from the things he said. He said, it's no use us going back in with the Romans, because if we go back in, they will be our superiors. And he made an obvious, he made, told an obvious truth. It's the superiors that change the people underneath, and not the people underneath that change the superiors. If we, with the old religion, go back in under these people, as long as they have the new religion, they're going to change us to the new religion. That's what we've seen with the Society of St. Peter. 
with uh, the Institute of the Good Shepherd, with St. Peter, uh, St. Peter's, with uh, uh, the monastery of the Baron. And that's what would happen clearly to the, to the society. <coughs> but the, the leaders of the society have, over the last few years, been flirting with the fantasy. They've been listening to the sirens. Back in Greek mythology, the sirens were beautiful mermaids who sat on dangerous rocks and sang lovely songs. And the sailors went too close either to admire the mermaids or to listen to their songs, and their ship shattered on the rocks. A siren was not just a, a great metal thing blaring. A siren was originally these, these lovely girls on the rocks who pulled the sailors onto the rocks. The society <laughs> began listening to the siren, siren seducers in Rome. Come back into the mainstream church. Hang loose. Stop being so uptight. Come with us. You've got so much to give us. You have the faith. We need you. We're in difficulties in the new church. We need your example. All kinds of lovely arguments. And instead of staying with the archbishop, these leaders of the society once began, began again to talk with the Romans of the new religion. And the Romans are cunning. And they're much more cunning than the Society of the Tenth can ever be. The strength of the Society of Christ the Tenth <coughs> was not its cleverness to ne in negotiating. Its strength was the real faith, the true faith. And that's its only real strength. And if that faith diminishes, if the water in the harbor goes down, the ship of the SSPX is going to hit those rocks. It's already bumping against the rocks. And any moment now, well, nearly, very nearly, in, in this last April, May, June, very nearly this society got sunk. It was very nearly sunk because the leader of the Society of Vice President wrote a document, which had just come out recently, which more or less said, Romans, we accept your Vatican too. It didn't say it bluntly. It said it ambiguously, but that's basically what it was saying. We in the society are open to the new religion. Let's put it like that. We're open to the new religion. For instance, the Hermit Benedict XVI's hermeneutic of continuity. If the Romans had accepted at that moment, in, in the early June, if last early June the Romans had accepted Bishop Foley's document and his offer, we can exist with you on this basis in future, on the basis of more or less accepting Vatican II. If the Romans had accepted it, it would have been the end of the society of Christ then, as we have known. Fortunately, possibly by the help of heaven, the Romans refused. Why did they refuse? Because one and two and three months back from June, poss the possible reason, the possible reason, the purpose of Rome is to get the Society of the Tenth in with Rome so that there will no longer be anybody reigning on their parade. The, the Society of the Tenth, with the old time religion, has been reigning on the parade of the new religion, which everybody else in the Catholic Church, more or less, not everybody, but more or less everybody accepts. So the Romans don't like people reigning on their new parade. So they want to get the SSPX in with Rome. But they don't want to split the SSPX in such a way that half of the SSPX would stay outside and it would again crank up the old religion. The Romans don't want that. They want to pull in everybody so that it's an end of the old religion. They don't want the old religion to continue. The Romans aren't happy, nor is the leadership of the SSBX happy, that the resistance is cranking up again. So why did the Romans refuse? Because the Romans were afraid. Because of the letter of April, the letter of the three bishops showed, got, raised quite a lot of support, made a lot of people anxious, it told a lot, showed a lot of people what was going on, made a lot of people anxious, and began to 
and showed Rome that if they accepted Bishop Foley's offer, they would probably not pull in the whole society. And so the Romans backed off, and they're now waiting for time and the modern world to start again, or to continue to pick up again its work of corrupting the society, of, of, of diminishing the faith of the members of the society, so that next time round, Rome will be able to make a clean sweep and pull in everybody. So that it looks as though the reason why Rome refused, and the only reason why it refused, was because uh, they, could, they couldn't pull in everybody. That's not for certain the reason, but it may have been. In any case, my dear friends, there is a huge war going on between the old religion, the true Catholic religion, and the modern world. Between the true Catholic religion and Vatican II. Between the true Catholic religion and those leaders of the society, in particular, leaders of the society by sin, who want to go back in with Rome, with Vatican II, and with the modern world. It's a huge fight. If you stay around until a conference after supper, I will back up three or four or five hundred years to show where this all basically comes from and why it's the most normal thing in the world for the society to be being tempted. Why it's the most normal thing in the world for the society to fall. It's not surprising. Most of the modern, most of the church has given way to the modern world. There's a small pocket of resistance, which was the society, and it, it's going the way of all the rest of the church and the rest of the world. It's not. It's all too normal. It's, but it's not what our Lord wants. Our Lord has foreseen this tremendous falling away from the faith. He's allowed for it. He hasn't wanted it, but he's wanted to allow it. Why does he want to allow it? Mysterious reasons of God. One main reason, he leaves us free. He is not, he does not treat us like robots or like dogs. We are not animals, we are free hu human beings with free will. And if mankind chooses to go the wrong way, God is not going to force it to go the right way. You and I might think, he ought to force it because we've got such a horrible world all around us. But remember, a lot of people today don't think that today's world is so horrible. A lot of people, in fact most people, want the way that the world is. Otherwise, it's common sense that it wouldn't be the way it is. What we've got is the way that juvenile and senile delinquents want it. For instance, it's no use blaming modern politicians for being modern politicians. Who elects them time after time after time? It's the people. Modern politicians respond to what the people want in order to get voted in. Then is the system of voting the best? Maybe it isn't. Maybe the modern way of politics is not all that good. Because the politicians will always be tempted to pander to the people in order to get voted in. Maybe democracy is not so wonderful after all. Maybe the modern world is not as wonderful as it pretends. In school we all learn that monarchs are silly, fuddy-duddy old people who get statues put up to them, put up for them, but the best thing that can be done with those statues is to pull them down. <coughs> That's what we all learn. And democracy is the great new age. Well, maybe democracy is not so wonderful because it's going to operate on the principle of promising a free lunch when all of us that have got any common sense know that there is no such thing as a free lunch. Somebody has to pay. And if nobody's paying, then you go into debt. And that's why the government of the United States the government of England, the government of France, the government of most of these countries, if not practically all, are deep in debt because of democracy. The modern world has not got it right. The modern world is off its head. 
But it's what sinful people want. But it's not what God wants. And God does not want a church that's in tune with this sinful, not foolish modern world. And that's why, my dear friends, if you're here today because you don't want to go the way of the new society and the way of the new church and the way of the false new world, you're quite right. You're going to have to pay a price. Our Lord never promised an easy. He never promised an easy ride. He that will be my, my disciple, let him renounce himself, not fulfill himself. Everybody today talks about self-fulfillment. No, 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 no. Let him renounce himself. Let him take up his cross every day. Take up his cross. Cross. It hurts. Every day, not just one day a week or ever on Sundays. Every day. Let him take up his cross every day and follow me. And that's the way to heaven. And that's the old religion. And it's tough. And it's not nice. It's not easy. It's not soft. But it gives us, it gives any of us a peace of mind and a peace of heart because we may be out of tune with the world, but we're in tune with God, and that's really what matters, and that's what's deepest inside any of us. So it's a deep happiness peace against unhappiness and suffering of the flesh of things, the superficial part of us. And so some of you, a few of you are here today for confirmation. One of the seven sacraments instituted by our Lord himself to give us the grace we need to stand up to the world and fight the good fight. Confirmation in particular, as of course all of you know or should know, is the sacrament exactly of firmness or strength, strength to fight the good faith, strength to fight the good fight, strength to keep the faith until death. And that's easier said than done. Look at many of your comrades, friends, relatives, in the society of Bicetans, now completely ignorant of what's going on. I've got to imagine, if you're here today, it's because you're not completely ignorant. Why aren't you ignorant? Because you wanted to know what's going on. You've taken some trouble to find out, and you'll realize that, that the, the, the rest of the SFX is maybe not the way to go. But there's numbers of, who, are, who are being caught unawares by the devil. And they're liable to go along with a society which is very liable to be going towards Vatican II. So, it's, it's a big fight which was, used to be outside the society. The fight was outside <coughs> the society against the false church and the false modern world. But now the fight is inside the society. And what we're going to, if the society was a remainder, a remainder from the, the church prior to the council. What we're, going, what we're liable to see now is a remainder of a remainder. And then in another 15 years time, it could be the remainder of the remainder of the remainder. That's the way the world's going. It's getting worse and worse. Don't deceive yourselves. <coughs> and it's not about to get better. It's surely going to get a lot more worse, a lot worse, and even dramatically worse before it's any better. Things are as bad as they are, or, or as they were, or even worse than under the, in the time of Noah. You may remember in the time of Noah, the whole world was so corrupt <coughs> that God either had to force people to be good, which he's not going to do, or force them to save their souls by taking away their free will, and God's not going to do that. He's not going to force us to go there. Or, when he did what he did, was a tremendous chastisement of, by a flood of water, but which left people time to make, as the water was coming up their chest, they still had time to make an act of contrition before they went goo, 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 and drowned. It was a great mercy, this chastisement. That child, the flood was a great mercy because it enabled a large number of souls, not the majority, a large number of souls, the minority, to be saved, who, if the corruption had gone on, would have been lost. Exactly the same today. The corruption today is so terrible 
But if God doesn't intervene, it's, it's gaining on us all the time. It's now gaining on the society of life today. The corruption is so terrible that if, it's, if God doesn't intervene with something like the flood at the time of Noah, we will all of us go under, and I don't accept myself. I could easily go under as well. And we'll find that the day will come, oh, I'm just, I'm tired of resisting, resisting, resisting. I'm going to go with the flow. We see people today in their 70s, 60s and 70s, divorcing in order to extract a few more drops of, of quote-unquote enjoyment out of life. To remarry or whatever. Craziness. Just craziness. The craziness is gaining everywhere. What's the, what's the simplest remedy? The simplest and surest remedy is the rosary. My dear friends, you may lose the mass. You may have, there may be no more priests, there may be not enough priests. The priests may all be taken off by the one world government and buried in Alaska or in Siberia. It will be the same thing by then. You won't, maybe you'll lose the mass. Maybe you'll lose the sacraments. But if you have the rosary, as long as you have ten fingers, you still have the rosary. And you may be thrown in a concentration camp. Apparently they've already built the concentration camps in the United States. Very likely also in England. I've not heard of them in England, but I've heard of them in the United States. They're not called concentration camps, of course, because that's the Nazis. And the Nazis were nasty, and we are ninth. Our government the ninth. Our government loveth, don't they? They don't love us at all. The modern governments are servants of the devil to help the devil to get as the, the largest possible number of souls into hell. By, for instance, same-sex marriages and all of the rest of the, of the terrible legis the laws that they pass, which are against God, against the church, against the Ten Commands, for sin and for the damnation of the citizens that come under these governments. Again, don't be under any illusion. Don't say to yourselves, the modern system is wonderful, the modern governments are lovely, they love me, I love them, uh-uh. The governments are becoming nasty enough for even some fairly foolish people to open their eyes to what's really going on. And it's, it could easily end in a third world war. James and James in scripture says, war is the punishment of sin, there's plenty enough sin today to cause another huge war. The amount of sin is huge. It will, it's going to cause a huge war. It'll be the third world war. It will be frightening. The atom bombs will get thrown around <coughs> like confetti. That's what it looks like. But we will have deserved it. And again, it may be a mercy of God. It will be, look like a chastisement of God, but it will be a mercy of God. Because when the bombs are flying around, a lot of people are going to make acts of contrition who would otherwise, without the bombs, would never have made acts of contrition. My dear friends, we have dramatic days ahead of us. Don't lose heart. Don't lose courage. If you're here today, it's most likely that you have the faith. Stand up and fight the good fight. What our Lord says in the Garden of Gethsemane is watch and pray. Keep your eyes open. Watch what's going on and understand what's going on. Read what's really going on. What is really going on is the fight between the devil and between our Lord and his mother for the salvation or damnation of millions and millions and millions of souls. That is what is really going on. The generator of world history is the fight between our Lord and the devil. And today it's exactly that. It's a good fight, but if you're fighting on the side of our Lord, it's a fight that you can win if you want. It's not a fight in which you need ever lose your heart or lose courage. You can win if you want, because God is much stronger than the devil. Much, much, much stronger. If you're on the side of God, you're on the stronger side. It doesn't look like it, but you are. Then have courage and pray during the little ceremony of confirmation, which doesn't last long. Pray that... The few souls being confirmed, either for the first time or conditionally, that they turn into soldiers of Christ who fight the good fight until death and to save their souls. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.